Hi everyone, this is Crash Me Twice, and today I share with you part 2 of the Force Toy mod. If you haven't seen part 1, I do recommend to consider watching it to understand what the next steps are about. So far I've built the base plate and rails. I also have created the bridge plates for the rail blocks. The next step is to drill NEMA 17 mounting holes on the bridge plates and install the gear rack on which the pinions run to move the block assembly along the rails. For now, I'm using the old NEMA 17 motors I got from eBay, but in the end, they will be replaced by Moon's NEMA 17 steppers with higher torque and dual shafts. This offers better holding force and allows me to add a sensor to the opposite shaft. This gives me more options I may think of later. This is the steel modulus 1 gear rack, just as I have received it. I have to make an aluminum base to bring it up to reach the pinions. But first, I need to cut it to lengths. Next, I have to do a mounting holes and thread them for M5 bolts. A 6061 aluminum square rod will serve as the base for the gear rack, and I need to cut the base also to size and then machine a slot allowing the pinions to run without touching or rubbing the base when the gear rack is mounted. I also have to drill holes for the bolt securing the rack to the base and machine pockets for the bolt heads to make them flush with the base. I have marked the base and the gear rack on the end towards the joystick, which I now match up before I bolt the gear rack to the rack base. You can see here how the pinion runs on the gear rack and has plenty of room for adjusting it up or down. This will also allow me to change the 10 tooth pinion out for a different brand or use a pinion with more teeth. They can differ in lengths marginally. All looks good. I'm now ready to slide the rack assembly between the rail blocks and do a quick inspection. And I noticed that I need a bit more room and this means that I have to take a bit of material off the blocks. The bridge plates are only mounted on the outer edges of the block and therefore I have no problem reducing it a bit. I will use some masking tape to prevent any milling debris to get into the bearings. I also mark them to prevent machining the wrong side by accident. Well, this worked out. Now I got the room I needed. The next step is to measure and drill the holes needed to mount the stepper motors.
The mounting is off-center on the bridges to allow some more room for the rod system I'm planning on using. The center hole must be larger in diameter to let the motor shaft pass. NEMA 70 motors also have a small step up around the shaft as you can see versus the mounting area. I'm milling out a pocket for this section. And of course all this needs to be done for both bridges. I am drilling a hole to mount 8mm studs to hold rod end bearings for the rod system. I need to chamfer them as I will be using countersunk bolts as studs which bolt from the bottom of the rail bridges. I am drilling into the gear rack base two holes and add a M8 thread to mount the assembly to the base plate. Using a bolt on each end allows me the flexibility to adjust the meshing of the pinion gears to the gear rack. In the main base plate I am milling slots for the bolts mounting the gear rack base and allow for aforementioned adjustment. After mounting everything up, I am testing with an old thread rod and measure the amount of travel of the blocks when the stick is moved along the Y axis. I then calculate out on how long of an extension I have to make to provide sufficient travel of the rail blocks. This is important when activating the fourth trim. If I have not enough travel, the stick will move too fast when the head switch activates the electronic trim. If it is too long, I will run out of room on the guide rails. So this has to be accurate. Creating the stick extension from 6061 aluminum requires a bit of machining and filing. I have to create the pocket to slip over the part that originally held the cam bearing which I no longer need. In a matter of fact, I will not reuse the bearings, cams or the cam arms of the original setup. I stop by machining down the extension to the same width as the original joystick end is. Next, I am machining the pocket into the extension. I couldn't believe it, but it never happened. The largest ample in my arsenal was the perfect size. Whoopee. Here's the pocket. Worked out great. Now I need to drill the holes to mount it to the joystick. I need two holes or the extension will waggle like a dog's tail. The joystick held in my vice gets a second hole drilled.
You can see here that there was some hand filing involved to pass the radius on the Whipple base, and I can tell this was a workout. Next step is to square the other edge of the extension, drill holes and create pockets for bearings. As I have problems with step gauging, I made a small helper tool. Simply a hex key and a 5mm wide collar with a set screw will do the job nicely. I'm milling some elongated pockets to make it look fancy. I'm using my milling vise to press the bearings into the extension. I wish I had an arbor press. Oh, hang on. I do have still one new in the box. My shop, though, has no room for it. But this will change soon as I'm planning on moving across the landing into a bigger room. So watch out for a video coming soon on the move to my new kingdom. Now, doesn't this look good? Let's install it with some good old Loctite and hopefully it will work as intended. And it does. Well, that's it for today. Don't forget to check out my Discord channel and to visit my website for project downloads. Hope you all enjoyed this video and I hope I earned a like from you. Crash me twice, out.